can uh, very good morning to everyone and today's uh, session will cover on the intermediate PLS aggression methods uh, basically <clears throat> it's um, to introduce all of you the the using PLS smart PLS3 okay Smart PLS3 compared to Smart PLS2, there's a lot of difference. Uh, lots of good stuff actually uh, in Smart PLS3. Uh, for those who definitely intend to use Smart PLS, I strongly recommend that you uh, use the Smart PLS3. I know that it's not free, you have to pay to get the professional version. Um, but if you knew that, if you already know that you are going to analyze your data, so you can always use the, the trial version for about one month. It's a complete one, about one month. Okay, so I, again, maybe some of you wants to share among yourself to to purchase the professional version, that can be done as well. Uh, but most students would opt for the, the trial version one, which you can use up for 30 days. So yeah, you have to manage your time, then you can, you can actually use that to analyze your data. And like I explained or shared with you last week, uh, PLS, uh, very much uh, involved with uh, uh, bootstrapping, where you need to get some uh, recommended. Now this is one thousand replications. So when you bootstrap, just 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 a story, is just to share with you guys before I start. I I see that there are people coming in to join. So I'll just share with you all a little bit of the, the good stuff and some of the things that you may have to bear in mind when you're actually using Smart PLS. Smart PLS uh, very much using bootstrapping to generate the T values, okay, in order for you to, to, to know whether your P value is uh, significant or not. Uh, so when you bootstrap, the values that come out, okay, uh will not always be the same every time you bootstrap okay the number will run some differences so i fully recommend and highly advise to those students that probably coming to to your analysis part that you save your the output okay in smart pls2 you need to convert the output into Excel, and then from Excel you, uh, you you create a table in your words. Then you transfer the figures. But in Smart PLS three, you can easily import that uh, the figures in Excel's from the table. So it's it works much easier compared to the previous one, the older versions one. So basically, the point that I want to make down here is. If you generate a good uh, measurement models and your structural uh, regression analysis, save that. You can save as many times as you can. And then later on, you can make some comparison which one, which outcome that give you, I mean, the most uh, that you you like the values. You can save them. Okay, so. Smart PLS, okay, very much using bootstrapping. So in, in today's workshop, we are going to use uh, the PLS algorithms and the bootstrappings. But the newer versions of Smart PLS 3, they have the normal PLS uh, algorithms and then the other one have a consistent one. So I will explain why, when to use the consistent PLS algorithms or and when to use the normal one. Okay, so today, uh, 
what we're going to cover. You can see, everybody can see the uh, my PowerPoint. Can you see PowerPoint? Yes, doctor. Okay. So, <clears throat> Uh, basically, we're going to cover this here. Yeah? Uh, we're going to do the importing data and getting started. Import data from SPSS. For you to use Smart PLS, you must have SPSS. You need to have SPSS. So we'll use SPSS at the initial stage and then we'll save it to uh, the extension. Uh, uh, CVS extensions so that we can import and then bring it into smart pls so once we've done this okay we're gonna go to setting up your first models i'm gonna use uh similar models like i shared last week okay this we're gonna cover the linear one now in today's we're just gonna cover the linear one the non-linear okay and all this the complex models we're gonna cover next week okay uh it's just the linear one but before we go to the uh structural model this is a structural models before we go there we, we need to do some measurement models that is a factor analysis okay this is very important before you actually goes to testing your hypothesis okay or your path analysis you need to ensure that all your uh, say for example, this is your models. All your models, okay. Uh, uh, in PLS, we call it measurement models. In MS, we call it a CFA, confirmatory factor analysis. But um, today, uh, in nowadays, there are some versions. They, ever since they introduced the smart PLS3, the owner introduced smart PLS3, okay, they tends to bring in uh, new features or model fit features. And then they, in the latest publications and latest uh, uh, explanations, uh, it become like, confirmatory factor analysis but as we go to model fit later on i purposely put here covariance versus variant based sam because smart pls is a variant based structural equation modeling so when we actually talk about model fit later on uh, we don't really need actually but for those phd students okay if you use smart pls i recommend or advise to you to get the model fit via smart pls platform you don't have to go to cfa confirmatory factor analysis via ms no need okay you don't have to I thought I would show it to you where are the parameters that you need to report and what are the minimum threshold, uh, threshold values that you should have in order to get a model fit. But basically what I, my, my intention down here or my, my purpose explaining to you here is that um, there is a tendency, uh, some researchers, uh, they don't use the term measurement models anymore. They use factor analysis because in smart PLS, okay, uh, which I'm going to show it to you later on, they use a factors button where you have to pick that in order to conduct these measurement models. Okay, and then we talk this thing with this will take a little bit of time to, to, to ensure that we get the uh, correct measurement models measurement models basically will cover all this conversion factor loadings ave the reliabilities and the validity the discriminant validities so we're going to cover this before we actually goes to the, the structure testing the structural models all right 
then once we, we, we've done that, uh, we'll show it to you how to set up your research models. Then we do some regressions, regressions, and we do some interpretations of your research model. This is a linear model. So next week, we're going to cover the non-linears. Then uh, the last one is uh, the effect size. That's the F square. Uh, so we're going to cover the F square to, to see which are the predictors has uh, substantials or mediums or small effect size to your dependent variables. So we're basically going to cover all these uh, six items. Now. Okay, it's uh, try to make it as simple as possible. And then later on, uh, we we reserve some Q and A, and then probably to revert back a little bit for those who wants to get to understand a little bit more better of what I have covered. All right. Any questions so far? Any questions? Any questions? So far now, huh? all right, okay, I'm gonna, um, Okay, so this is the uh, SPSS, which I think uh, most of you are familiar with. Okay, these are the data that I actually use uh, to present uh, last week. This, yeah, this is a similar one. So I use these data. Uh, okay, so there, there you go. I already preset like because it's kind of impossible for me to set from scratch because it would take hours to, to set up all this. So it's all there, okay? So these are all this I have. This is not SPSS, so I created this thing. So I hope that for those who, who are new, okay, and then you probably need to work it out with your own uh, SPSS or data entry and everything. So this, uh, data is okay. I have already labeled them according to what it's supposed to be. Okay, so in order for us to 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 bring this data into PLS, okay, basically what we need to do is uh, we go to files, we save as. Okay, if you look at here, okay, there is a common delimited CSV. This is a CSV. You need to save this file. Okay, see, if you look at what's, I put it here, workshop PLS2, it's already there. Okay, the CS, CSV, you need to have this extension CSV and then you save. Once you save, then you're done. Okay, and then we go to Smart PLS. Everybody see this Smart PLS? No. Everybody can see it's Smart PLS, right? So everybody can see the Smart PLS? Nampak, Nampak, huh? Okay, so this is Smart PLS, huh? So <clears throat> what you need to do, we need to import the, uh, the data. So what we do is here is that we create a new project, okay? We create a new project, then there you go. Then you key in here, exactly like what I already have there. You can key in any anything, anything that that, that suit you, uh, relevance to your studies or whatever the terms of your, your, your project or thesis one, thesis two, or whatever it is, okay? Uh, then we turn here, workshop, Okay, uh, two. Okay, I put it down here. Yeah, yeah. Put it. Uh, I changed that. LS two. LS three. Okay. 
If I put it okay, then there you go. Okay, it's there. But there's no data. But underneath here, there's a double click to import data. So you need to import the data. Okay, so you double click. And there you go. This is the one that I showed to you earlier that we need to save with the extension of CVS. Yeah. Oh, you have this. You click. You see the data file here. There's an extension CSV or TXT. So you're correct. You got it. Then you open. Then you put the name here, Workshop PLS2, exactly that what you have already saved earlier. Okay, then you put OK. There you go. All your data appear. Okay, if you <coughs> see a green, okay, it shows that your file, it works. It will works, okay? Anyone, if you are, are actually using Smart PLS2, okay? This is another one. If you're using Smart PLS2, okay? Uh, when you import your SPSS data, okay? There are some of you probably experiencing these things. If I'm talking about PLS2, okay? PLS2 uh, have some, they are not really stable PLS2. Of course, nowadays there's no more PLS2. It's already been stopped. I mean, there's no more uh, uh, update of PLS2. But, you know, there are some of you eventually, if you're just not able to purchase the smart PLS3, some of you have no choice but to use smart PLS2. Because if you are using the Smart PLS3 student version, the number of items that can be executed via Smart PLS3 only up to 100 respondents, 100 units. So some of you more likely going to have more than 100 respondents. Therefore, you can't use Smart PLS3 because Smart PLS3 trial version or student versions only allow you to have up to 100 respondents. Therefore, I suspect that some of you may end up using Smart PLS3 too. So if you actually using Smart PLS2, I share with you all your data that you actually before you import to PLS2, you must ensure that your data in smart in SPSS they are clean. There's no missing values, or your parameters that you already set here. Suddenly, you say, for example, you mistakenly key wrong numbers, and you were just not able to to detect them. But then you save into extension CSV and then you import it into PLS. So uh, we continue. So um, earlier I was sharing with you, if you are using uh, Smart PLS2, if there is some missing values in your SPSS data, okay, this data will not appear and you will not get green button in your project explorer here you will not see you will be red color some of you were wondering what's wrong what's wrong what's wrong some of you are experiencing this so uh, for those who are using smart pls2 okay you got to be careful ensure that they your data from before you import from from SPSS, they all has been clean. They has been you know, checked properly. Okay. So the first thing that we need to look 
from our data here. These are very, these are raw data that you extract that I, from SPSS. Uh, the good thing about Smart PLS2, they also give you what is the missing value, if there's a missing value, what is the indicators. Okay, indicators are, the, are your questionnaires. Okay, indicators are questionnaires. Later on, I will show it to you and then whether we will, uh, will how to draw all those research models. Then what's your sample size? Sample size is your number of respondents. For today's um, examples, we only have 70 respondents. So the another things that you need to, one thing good about Smart PLS3 is they even show you the the kurtosis and the skewedness of your data. Okay. Uh, basically, what is this? These are to look at your your uh, the normality of your data, kurtosis and skewedness. As long as your 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 data uh, not uh, exceeding 1.96 plus and 1.96 minus, you should be. Uh, uh, within that parameters. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's the 1.96 plus or minus. Yeah, plus or minus. Okay, uh, you should be okay. One thing good, that's the good thing about PLS3. They will straight away give it to you. And then they, they even give you a standard deviation or is your max. So you can see from here, these are your, uh, what we call here is my uh, continuous variables. Uh, scale measure from maximum is five and minimum is one. So it's a Likert scale. It is a Likert scale from uh, from a from number one to number five. So if you have one to seven, say for example, here you can see here I have one to seven scales. One to seven scales. So. They even show to you there's no missing values. What is your mean? Okay. Uh, what is your medians? Okay. You can actually see from here. Uh, of course, you can check this uh, in SPSS, but you don't have to. Okay. But usually, when we do the the the, the do the templates in SPSS, we do the labelings, we key in our data. Generally, we, you have to screen all your data. So when you eventually export it, uh, import it, and then bring it into PLS, your data should be as clean as possible in order for you to uh, get a good result. So there you go. We have the green button here. It shows that it will work. Okay. Then you click here. Okay. And there you go. Okay. Good things about uh, Smart PLS3. You have can you can draw. You can create colors. Okay. Here. So you will look wow. So nice, is it? Okay. So we're gonna draw something. Okay, so we're going to draw exactly the same as like this. Okay, uh, then my research model is the linear innovation orientation concept development. So let's let's see. Okay, on top here we have these latent variables. Yes, go here, click. There you go, then click one, then click two. There you go, you already have two, okay? We have two Latin variables. So we are going to, oops. All right, so well, I have not changed to select here. I have not changed to select, so that's the reason. So it's okay, I can undo. There you go. And we only have this two. So we we'll put select here, put here, and yeah, put here, there you go. That's it. Then, um, let me see. Wait, uh, 
let me see, get my last week models. This is my last week models. Uh, let's see. Stop. Stop presenting. Let it show it to you. Okay. Show it to you. This is my. You can see right. This is my last week research model, structural models. I have the innovation. I have a concept, but this concept development has second order construct. I have not touched second order construct or second order or third order, but what basically I'm sharing with you is that the concept development has multiple dimension, consists of another four dimension. So what we're going to do is we are going to create another four latent variables okay earlier we i show you there's only two variables here yeah? right and but i we also know that this latent variable has four dimensionals uh i'll consider of multi-dimensional we got four latent variables so we can come back here create a latent variables then just click here click here click here click here there you go but so easy okay make sure that you go back and then select this in order for you to move this latent variable around so we select this then we create our... there you go okay Right, then uh, we know this, so we need to rename these things. So if you right click, okay, you right click here, okay, bring your cursor here, then you right click, then you can see the tables here. So what it says here, okay, and then rename, okay, so you rename, then what is this? Then I put it here. Innovations, orientations. Okay, and put okay. There you go. Okay, we change that. So same thing here. So I'm just gonna go do it very quickly. Okay, it's a concept developments. Okay, then here. Uh, I'm just going to go back here. What is that? Idea generation business analysis. Okay. Testing and design. And the last one is pre marketing. There you go. So we have done the labeling. Okay, we reset, we create our own latent variables name. Okay. There you go, and then we design a little bit to make some arrangements so it look nice. Because eventually this thing you can actually import and then you can export it into your 
uh, words in your words. So you will look nice and you can change the color, whatever color you like. So you can create, it looks impressive and your examiners will look, will look, I mean, it knows that the examiners knows that you have done a remarkable job. Right. So they all turn red. Now they are, they are red color. What does that mean? They were red color, meaning there is nothing. You can, they cannot be uh, regressed. So what we need to do. So these are indicators. These are the indicators. Okay, here are all the indicators here. Okay, that you import from your SPSS earlier that I showed it to you. So what we need to do is, uh, where are the innovation? Innovation are from here. So you just click and then you put shift. Okay, and then you press the last indicator. So you don't have to do it one by one. Okay, so you bring it here. There you go, it looks nice. Okay, so you put a little bit here, so you look. see, all right. Then we go to find the idea generations. So we got here two, only two, I believe it was only two, okay. Put here, then we have the business analysis one. Put here, okay. And then we find the business, the business analysis. Yes. There you go. We got four. Okay. And then we got the testing. We have testing one. Testing four, then put it here. Then we have the pre. Okay. We have some more. If you are, this is your data, this is your work. You should be able to know whether you have covered all the indicators, then place it in your latent variables. But this is my old data, so I gotta make sure that everything is placed pro. Yep, that's it. Okay, so uh, you want to arrange this, so we go here. Then you can always use your alignment here, or you can use your right click, also can have alignments here. Okay, for now, for, for now I'm just gonna use this, so much easier. There you go. All right. There you go. So now, we are going to create the, the arrows, connectors. So underneath here, there's a connector. So select this, connect Latin variables. Okay, so we connect here. There you go, we connect here. There you go. There you go. All the endogenous variables, exogenous variables, that is your, the outer one, okay? In PLS, although in SPSS, this one, we call it the independent variables. Here, we call it independent variables. But in PLS, they don't do that, okay? Uh, in PLS, okay? Uh, endogenous and exogenous, okay? Those, the outer one, okay? We still consider them as the uh, exogenous in PLS, all right? So if you look at here, these are consist, these are reflective. Huh? If you look at the arrow, if the arrows are pointing outside, okay? That is reflective. If the arrows are pointing inside, that is con 
formative. Okay. Uh, for now, we, we were not talking about formative uh, uh, reflectors. Huh? We were talking about reflective indicators for now. Uh, next week, we will touch on the formative uh, 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 Latin variables. Uh, there are totally two different analysis. And so for now, let's not mix up we stick with for reflective models first, yeah? Later on, next week, we'll talk about formative models. So here, we can see this a green one. It's good, 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 good. But somehow, in the middle here, they are still red. And we can't regress this. It's not complete. So in PLS, okay, only in PLS, okay, they use a repetitive manifest variables. What does that mean? It means that all these variables, because these are the multiple dimension of concept development. Okay, so we're gonna take all these indicators and then put it here. So what we're gonna do is here, okay, we're gonna bring it all in. Okay, there you go. Okay, we're gonna bring it all in. So you look at is already ten blue colors. Okay. All in. There you go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. No, 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 not Eno. No, no. Delete. Delete. There you go. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. Okay, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. There you go. We set. So what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna hide these indicators. So it will not look messy. Here, right click and you can see here hide indicator of a selected construct. So we're gonna hide. Then, no more. And you can see a plus here. Every, any time that you see a construct with a plus sign, it shows that there's a manifest variables being placed inside. So we don't. So all green. So it look nice already now, right? Are you all with me now? Are you all okay? Yes, sir. So far okay. So far, you York. Okay, let's see what's the what's the chat here. So far, okay. But I can't see the smart. All right, okay. Okay, so there's another question here, Doctor Montagna. Next time, <laughs> because I'm not in the chat mode, so can't really see, but now I, then I do, okay? Just a question to, to answer your question. This is under SPSS, eh? Uh, Asna, Asnari Valley, right? So this is under SPSS, like under SPSS, yes, you, if there is a reverse questions, you, you try to make, basically in SPSS, when it comes to statistics, okay, they, they, they don't want you to put it in, uh, uh, negative wordings. They want it as positive as possible. Uh, my my advice to you is that for those who are constructing your own questionnaires, make sure that all your questionnaires are in a similar tones of English. When I say similar tones of English, okay, make it uh, consistent throughout your questionnaires. 
uh, because I know that there are some of you who will pick one from here, one from there, one from here from a multiple sources. And therefore, uh, the sentence of your questionnaire may not constant when it comes to English. I'm not saying that there's a, there's a problem with it in English, but uh, uh, the sentence has to be consistent. The, uh, the, 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 the flow of the show is, uh, what, what do we call it? Not a flow, but the, the patterns of your sentence has to be consistent. Because in SPSS, when you are doing your reliability tests, they will look at your inter-item consistency. So if there is some consistency, more likely the system, I mean statistics, okay, this belongs to here, not belongs to the others. So something like that. Okay, so stick with that. But of course, when it comes to negative wordings, okay, uh, that is another issue. You need to make sure that you, you record it uh, in your back in your SPSS to make it uh, uh, positive. Okay. Saya juga ada soalan seperti Arnisa. Okay, so I have answered that. Okay. All right. So so far, you are with me. All right. Okay. Let's continue. So now, okay, now we have. Our research models, wow. The linear one, remember? These are linear one, eh? but we only have one hypothesis here. Oh, very small one, only one hypothesis, but so much uh, stuff up here, just a linear one. But that's okay, that's the beauty of Smart PLS. Okay, you were just able to create from a simple to complex models. So, uh, remember earlier in my year, we are going to import data and getting started. There you go. We have done that. Then we have the setting up our first model. We have done that as well. Now we go to the measurement models. Okay, measurement models are it will take a little bit of time because there are few things that we need to ensure we we get it done. We get that numbers. We get that value in order for us to. Uh, interpret or regress our research model. Right. So, if you look at the upper side on the right side of this Windows, Smart PLS Windows, there is a calculate here. So, we click here. So, if you look at here, we have the PLS algorithms, we have bootstrapping, blindfolding. I'm not going to touch blindfolding. Uh, CTA, I'm not going to touch that. Okay. PLS, all this, 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 multi one. No, I'm not going to touch this all here. No. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to be interested on PLS algorithm, bootstrapping, and consistent PLS algorithms. That's it. Maybe next week, okay, if we have time, we'll touch on the multi-group analysis, but that is not part of my my intentions to uh, in my workshop, because in my workshop, I've said that we are only going to cover the linear and non-linear, that is the moderating and mediating. You are using Smart PLS3, okay, so you don't have to use SPSS no more. Are you good enough to use my PLS? Okay, so we're going to do it here. Right. Earlier, we were talking about uh, PLS, the normal PLS algorithm. Then we, the owner of Smart PLS, they created another version one, which is something that is wonderful. Previously, it wasn't to be like this, but now uh, they do, and it's good. Uh, you make your data analysis much, much more reliable. Okay, what is that? So what is the difference between consistent uh, PLS algorithms and normal PLS algorithms? Generally, okay, now again, this is not 
come from me. These are from my readings and, okay. Generally, you use consistent PLS algorithms when you are testing, when you have a reflective research model like this, reflective. Remember, I was talking to you in the last week. If your arrows are pointing inwards, it's a formative models. But today, uh, we're gonna, we are not going to touch formative models. We are only going to touch on reflective. So these are reflective. Okay. So reflective, we highly recommend. Not see we. Well, we'll based on my reading is recommended to use consistent PLS algorithms. So there you go. You can press this. Then we can have this. Okay, these are the tables. Uh, PLS, consistent PLS. Okay, you can read all the whatever stuff that we you even put the re uh, references here. You, I strongly recommend all of you okay uh that doing research academic research or your own normal research work to you know read get to know what is what is this okay so uh since uh we're gonna do some measurement models now because of I don't know. I was not really sure. Earlier, we during like five or six years ago, they never actually mentioned this effect analysis, but now they do. So I'm just going to use this terms measurement model or sometimes the uh, effect analysis. So consistent here. Put it here. We go to partial least square. So okay. Uh, set up here. Make sure that you click connected all latent variable for initial, but of course it's already connected anyway. So, but uh, well, this still wants to ask you to click here. Once you click here, it goes to a partial least square, uh, basic setting again, okay, the weighting scheme. Since we are using a factor analysis measurement models, we are not running path analysis, we're not yet on the regression model, uh, regression analysis, not yet. Okay, so we're going to select factor instead of path analysis. All right, all right, so we select factors. Then uh, under here, there is maximum iterations. I fully recommend to you all, you change this to 1000. Okay, 1000. But since this is a workshop, because if you, the more you put, you will take longer for the smart PLS to generate the output. Then this is also I want to share with you for those using older version of computers, I mean, a slow one. If you are using a very slow computers, your CPU are not, your RAM are not big enough. If you put 1,000, you will take some time. You can leave the computers for a while and then make some drinks and then come back and hopefully it's already done. Okay, so, but it doesn't mean that you have a poor low spec computers, you should key in low numbers. No, I fully recommend that you all use 1,000 replications. Okay, all right. Um, oh, this is a maximum iterations, 300, this should be okay. What, what I'm saying is the bootstrapping is not bootstrapping, sorry, it was my, my mistakes. Okay, so there you go, these are factors, okay? So, if you want to have a full report here underneath, you have the leave calculation like open, close, on open. So you always put open, so don't, don't change anything except factors. Okay, then you calculate. There you go. There. So <clears throat> we have here. Okay. Uh, one thing good about another good stuff about uh, Smart PLS three is that they will give you straight away the path coefficients. These are the metrics. Okay. 
um, you can see first thing that we need to to look on the fact analysis here is to look at your auto loadings. Okay, underneath here, there's the auto loadings. Put it here, there you go. You see? So all your auto loadings are here. You can see there's a red colors and green colors. What does that mean? Okay, it's kind of scary if you see red colors. It shows that something is not correct. Now, actually it is below the threshold value, the minimum threshold values of uh, outer loading is 0.7. So there are quite a number that are quite low, isn't it? Wow, very low. So if you look at the PLS, there you go. Okay, so we can see that there is some low one. They even have one. There's a test one. It's even one. Wow, this is something is not good. So this is what we call uh, measurement models. Okay, measurement models or fact analysis. You have to have uh, uh, a good. Uh, result. So how do we look here? Well, we even have 0.2. This should be omitted. We should get rid of this. 0.01 is a very low. So I suspect this may not be a good. So we can always go to here, report. We can check on the construct validity and reliability. So <clears throat> So do you have this some issue here the uh, under the dimension of business analysis pre marketing pre even pre marketing is totally out oh the average a v e average a v e the minimum threshold value of a v e has to be point five above so far here only one that has reached above zero point five zero point five the rest all not so good. So what can you do? Well, there are few things that you actually can uh, remedy this. Okay, the constructs. The first thing that you need to look at here is the outer loadings. Okay, uh, we want to see which are the lowest one. Okay, lowest one. All right, even here, uh, no. here we can see that the lowest one, 0 0.3, 0 0.0, these are not good. You should all, all get rid of that. Okay, idea generation is here, so we also have a 0 0.4, here 0 0.5, it's not really good. Here, pre one, also not good. 0.393 also not good. This is all below one. If I bootstrap this to get the T value to see whether uh, it's significant or not, I can relatively know already, even if I'm not doing the bootstrappings, okay, I can relatively know that there's some of the item here needs to, they're not significant. I can relatively know. So I don't have have to do it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to throw some, throw out some items. Okay, item here is the indicators. We're going to throw them out. Right. Okay. So let's throw this pre one first. Okay. Then we run it again. Then we check again. Then we run it again. Basically, this is what PLS is about. You need to make sure that your measurement models are reach to the minimum threshold values you need to. Okay, so we're gonna delete this. This is a very low one, point 
zero one trace so it's extremely low so not really good so i'm just gonna delete that okay so there you go remember if you have a second order construct okay we know that there are some indicators that embedded here so we need to get rid of that as well so let's look at show the indicators there you go then here's the pre one so we need to get rid of this All right okay let's there you go we've done it and then we can then we hide it again then we run it again consistent All right, so make sure that everything is path 300. Okay, and then we run it that again. Let's see if it's have some improvement. I mean, it should. I mean, technically, statistically, it should. Okay, so let's look at the construct reliability and validity. There you go. There's a slight improvement a little bit. We can see that there's already two items that is above 0.5 for the AVE. The composite reliabilities, okay, three, and then the other one, the other three is a bit, so the pre-marketing is still low. Chrome bar fast, so far, okay, never mind it. Okay, so let's look at the, okay. Okay. So the innovation is innovation. Let's say innovations. Innovation. They are good. Composite reliability is not good. No AV is not good. Okay. We can. We can. We go by one by one, yeah, one by one. So this is how we do it, okay, for the measurement models. So to make it look nice, to, you can see clearly we make it, okay. So we can, so this is another one, okay, 0 0.017. This is extremely low indicators, okay. The loadings are low, so we're gonna delete this, okay. Then we are going to run one more time. All right, so we, there you go. Look at the IG generation, it's already all green. Chrome bar alpha is good, but the AV is not good. Oh, the business analysis is totally not good. So look at the the pre-testing also not good so that's how you play you have to make sure that all your items are good so even the innovation is there's another one here 0 0.37 0 0.37 oh this is not good so we're gonna get rid of this okay uh, we'll get rid of this, you know, first the point negative point two two. Okay. Right, then we're gonna do the calculations. There you go. And the so the innovation is we have done good stuff about innovation, so they're all clear. Okay, the AVS has gone up, so we are we will we'll, we'll, we'll stick with that one. Business analysis, okay, it's not good. Okay, concept. Okay, developments, concept developments. Okay, no, that's that's fine. Um, uh, just put it here. Okay, uh, just to look at here. This is uh, the the. Uh, usually, when we do some construct. Uh, measurement models we only interested on the outer endogenous exogenous uh, variables 
Here we're not really concerned, we're only concerned on this. Okay. So when it comes to concept development, we can omit this, we don't really need it. Okay, we only put it. Idea generation is good, business analysis is not good. Business analysis is not good. So let's look at where are the business analysis that we can improve. So we know that the BA2 has the lowest number of loadings values is 0.45. So we can delete this, All right? Okay, I'm gonna run it again. And then hopefully it should, it should, okay. Business, now there you go. Business analysis, all the combo of uh, the composite reliabilities, okay. They are good already, except the AVE. Okay, AVE is still below the threshold, the minimum threshold values, okay. Uh, of course, the pre-marketing is another one. This is, this is a bit of problems there. So let's look again. The pre-marketing only have two more left. Um, last week, we have a uh, student asked me whether should, should we stick with the dimension with only one indicators. My answer to that was no. I mean, it still accept, but it is not because it's only testing one scale measures. So I purposely developed this kind of, of, of data like this. These are from my, 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 my old research, okay? They all, I mean, if you, if you look at my, 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 my slide last week, there's another one indicators here. There are four actually, but I purposely just create three indicators so that you you all be able to see uh, it is not always uh, you will, you will get always good result no so you get a very careful make sure that you have enough questionnaires then run fact analysis because if you using existing scale measure that you adopt from uh, from someone else that's already been validated. The original version of that scale measure might be more likely will be more. I mean, it has to be, you have to be more, isn't it? But you, you adapt from the validated one. You see, so it's already been reduced. Definitely has already been reduced. And then you use that and then you are using your new data. So you may likely end up like what I'm showing to you right now. You see, look at here, a pre-marketing. Pre-marketing and when we look at the report, Okay, uh, construct, uh, these are pre-marketing. The Chromebook offer is extremely low. The composite reliability is low. The AV is low. But you only have two more left indicators. I mean, what more can you do? There's not much you can do. You see? So you stop. But for for a research model like this, because these are reflective, okay? These are reflectives of concept, there are four, okay? Uh, then there's a tendency for you to get rid of this pre-marketing because it's not belong there. There's no correlations. I mean, there is, but not significant. It's not good enough. I mean, if you look at the, the numbers here, 0.3 and then, 0.6, so there you go. Okay, so these are the things that I purposely make it like this so that 
Uh, I know that from my from from my supervision of my PhD students, there some students they show us their questionnaires. Some only have like three items for one dimensions. Then I told her, what happened if you run factor analysis, then you end up like this. Then you, you stuck. You see? These are especially for those who are doing PhD or master by research. You're gonna be very, very careful because you don't want to end up like, like this, okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it here for a while. I'm about this, okay? I'm just but we will try to remedy this this uh, testing and design, okay? Because looking at this report here, testing and design, testing or testing and design is done. Uh, business analysis, okay? I'm just gonna with business analysis, okay? Business analysis is not still not good, okay? Still not good. Okay, so, so we're gonna, if we throw some, I mean, look at the, the better value, so something is not correct here. Uh, even the chrome, the R square also not, something is not right there. Okay, why? Well, if you remember earlier, I show it to you. You need to get rid of those items that you throw away from here. So the B2 are still inside here. You see? So these are sometimes we made a mistake, we forgot. Okay, so we need to get rid of this. Right, so what else that we need to get rid of? Okay, so all this pre pre two, okay, that's all they are all good. So we're gonna hide this, then we're gonna run it again. Hopefully, it will look better. There you go, business analysis, they all, it looks far better now, isn't it? Is that right? Only the AVE is still below the threshold, 0 0.447 for business analysis, 447. The rest are all their good business analysis. So it is still point. So what we're gonna do is we're going to get the lowest number 7.4. So we'll try this one, see if we should get rid of this. And then we run it one more time. Hopefully it will turn out to be a good one. No, it turned out to be totally out. So there you go. This is the problem. Okay. It doesn't look good. Okay. The two, not good. So we are going to So these are indicators. So we're gonna, this is the process actually, okay. This is the, you, most of you will encounter like this kind of process uh, where your measurement models 
somehow stuck something like this. And what can I do? You see, then if there's not much, if there's not enough indicators, then well, that's it, man. You you just can't complete your studies. You see. So these are the things that I want to, I purposely want to share with you guys, to, so that you, you know that um, there are quite a few, several reasons actually why you are having this kind of cough, cough of what we call here uh, outcome. First, your data might might not, might not good. Okay. Uh, second, uh, the theory must is a bit questionable. So if you're in the early stages, especially if you're doing a PhD, say for example, that you are slightly more than a year and you are still uh, trying to configure your theory, sometimes it is not a not say not correct theory, but it's something that needs to be to be improved. You see, but of course, when you actually comes to this stage, you have already collected your data, so it is good that you 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 come across that you may end up like this if your theory are not good, good enough, or your data are not good enough, and you may end up like this. Okay, so what you're going to do here is say, for example, that you you already come to this stage. You've already collected your data. You already have your data. And what what can need be done? You see? So we're going to put it back. Okay, so we have this. Earlier, we throw the B2. Okay, so we're going to... Put back the B2 here. Then we put the BA2 here. Let me see, see whether there's B2. Yeah, B2 is there. All right. And we are going to run it again. Okay, so we look, still not good. Okay, well, you have this two, not good. They are very bad. They're not even reached to the threshold values. You see, so let's look at, there you go. Something is not right here because even the R square is really reaching more than one. Okay, something is something wrong there. You see, something wrong. So, if we <clears throat> put back the number four, we already have number four. So if you have a number four, you put it in, you turn red, it says that, well, I already in, I'm not supposed to be there. So we put it here back, put it here back. So we try as best, usually we try our best to play with the indicators, which are the best one that you are able. If you can actually save this dimension, if you still want, theoretically, it is one of the dimensions is a reflective or concept, but statistically, based on your data that you generated or you collected, it doesn't appear to be a reflective of concept developments. You see? So basically, that's what the data tells you. So we try to run it again. Okay, we'll see whether it's it can be safe. If it can't be safe, then you just have no choice but to throw them away. 
You see, so there you go. Ground bar fire is not so good. The point three. So these are the two dimensions that are not good. So if you look at here, uh, see, they are not good. You see, so not much you can do. Okay. Even if I look at the safe example that I look at them, uh, model fit. See, if you look at the model fit, we always refer to estimated models. The chi square are not even, <laughs> it's not even infinite. Uh, the SRMR, the minimum threshold value, okay, it should be point zero eight below this is far this is, the model is not good the nfi not even came out not available is the, the even not generated the value of nfi so from here we can see that the model is not good okay this is not good uh, so what can we do you see, um, generally when you attend workshops or presentations, most of the time the presenter will, will design her or his presentation in a good outcome. But for me, I want to show it to you. More likely, uh, generally, you are going to encounter this kind of outcome, generally. It is almost unheard of when you a good research model. Unless if you are MBA or MNCM, you are adopting existing scale measure. That's fine. More likely you are going to get a good measurement models, more likely. Okay, the one is, I can accept that. But if you are doing your PhD, master by research, and you are collecting your own data, you're creating your own scale measure to some, some of your dimension, it is almost unheard of that you will generate good uh, measurement models. You may likely end up like this then there's a panic buttons there. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Then you are going to go back to your SPSS. Where did I go wrong? You see? Or what you can do here is, because these are reflective, okay? It's a reflective. They usually already run a fact analysis. I, I got this idea generation, everything, okay? You can throw this thing out and they only have two. So the concept development based on this factor analysis. Remember, these are factor analysis, okay? All right. Remember, these are factor analysis. Okay. Some of you may wondering in SPSS, okay. Uh, if you read Factor analysis and SPSS, fact, factor analysis uh, is actually exploratory factor analysis, EFA. What is that, that means? What does that tells you? It tells you that the concept developments, okay, you have not developed yet the dimension. You don't know the dimension yet, but you know that it consists of several dimensions, but it's just that you don't know which are which. So what you do is, you take all your questionnaires, you lump them and then run fact analysis. And that is the reason why when I did the running, I pick, I tick here, connect all LV for initial calculations. You see, you get it or not? Because if I uncheck this, 
the regression will only test individually. But now I have selected to test all of them. So you must know the reason behind it of this analysis. You must know. Then only you have some understanding why are the outcome are such like this. You see? Be clear. Like I said earlier, this effect analysis, if you report, you've done all your your report, you look at the model fit also not get good, and this is something not really good. See, these are all the R square is more than one. You just something is not something is uh it's impossible. R square has to be minimum, but uh, it should be less than one. Okay, so even if I look at the sum of the R square, the R square is all very good, but that's that's fine because we will we see that only have two, 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 and then you have a high uh, loading values. So what I'm going to do here is you just I've already done some all the remedies and it still doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this. Okay, because uh, right, so I'm going to delete that, and then I have to look at here see whether. Sorry, been deleted or not? No. All right. So one, two, three, four, three, three. Okay. Then we're gonna hide. Then we're gonna calculate again. Yeah. All right. There you go. Well, concept of accept this. This is another problematic here. Okay, can it be safe? Can it be safe? Let's look. No, it's only up two, and it's very low loadings anyway. So no way. So you're gonna delete this. There you go, now put it here, it will look nice. Let's check it one more time. Hopefully it works now. Yeah, it's work. So there you go, and then we look at the loadings. Loadings are all uh, in their respective, okay, these either generations, okay, these are all loadings with the right one, okay. There you go, all the green one, it looks nice now, okay. So, first, loadings, make sure all the loadings are within their parameters, their own construct, okay, we, just, we got that right. All right, and then we have look at the construct reliability and validities. The Chrome bar alpha looks good. CR looks good. The AV are all good. Okay, don't worry about the concept development. We are not interested in that. I only have the three one. Okay, so there you go. We, we get that. Then the next one here, okay, for the measurement model is the discriminant validities. Let's look at the discriminant validities. All right. Um, here under this um, uh, PLS uh, tree, we, we know the final local criterion, okay? Basically what we want here, we look at the all the correlation, the item, item correlation, and that's AV square root of AVE. According to Hayes, okay, make sure that the square root of AVE is higher than the all those correlation correlation value. It appear that uh, because the concept, no, we are not interested in concept. Yeah, we are about, about, about the idea generations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they all looks good. Yeah. 
Okay, so not really a worry. So they looks fine. Another one that we need to look here is um, the HDMT, the heteroids monoroid ratios. Heteroid monoroid ratios is the concept developments to again um, because we are not looking at the concept developments because there's a violations of threshold value here 0.122 according to uh hayes okay or the owners who, who develop smart pls okay the htmt the value should no more than one if it's below one especially the green one they are all good okay so however here, the testing design with concept development has shipped to more than one. But since the concept development is the, because we're only interested, remember, measurement models are only on the exogenous, not the middle one, endogenous. We're only interested on here. So, so, Overall, it looks fine, okay? So not really a worry, so don't worry on this. You only are only on this five, so, okay? So there you go. Um, we have done this. Let's look at the AVI, see whether it is a, okay, the AVI, okay, looks like the internal, they're all good, okay? They're all good, uh, multi culinary statistic. Um, there's another thing, good thing about Smart Peer F3. Uh, when it comes to statistics um, um, parameters, they, they provide you everything. Uh, of course, these are the outer AVI values. There are some violations, but usually we don't report individual uh, items. We only report the construct. So the construct, they're all good. No, uh, as long as it didn't know more than 0 0.1, it should be okay. There's no uh, 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 violations of uh, culinarities. Basically, culinarities here is uh, they're talking about here and here. Here, what they're saying is that correlation. The item here, okay, are not correlated to some of the item here. Item here not correlated to item here. I mean, it's belong. That's the reason why we 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 done discriminant analysis. The funnels. Okay, we have the cross loadings. Okay, and we do have the chrome first, composite and AVE. They all looks nice now. Okay, all right, and there you go. We've done these things. Okay, so let's look at the model fit. It's still not really good. Okay, so there's another thing, okay. Uh, that I like to share with you. PLS goodness of model fit compared to MS uh, model fit, they are two, no say different, but Smart PLS3, the owner who developed Smart PLS3, uh, there's some competition actually. I believe it is part of the competition because in the uh, back in a few years back, okay, uh, there are some researchers claims that uh, smart PLS are easy, then they are overrated, and many people use smart PLS, but actually they 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 are not compared with the MS. Um, I have no Korean both view actually is the arguments, uh, but basically if you look at the uh, uh, the fundamentals of what covariant is compared to variant base, variant base is just basically to look into the variance of individual dimension or construct. Well, the covariant uh, 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 CBSAM, okay, the covariant ones, they look on the uh, 
intercorrelation of dimension. And that's the reason why uh, one of the parameters uh, for your models, it has to be model fit, it has to be confirmed model fit. And that's the reason why they has this CFA, confirmatory factor analysis. And some of the item trash, uh, 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 values are similar uh, that we get it from smart as PLS are similar to uh, MS. So there are some arguments saying that if you're using smart PLS, okay, uh, this may not be something that you, I'm not saying that you should not report, but uh, as long as you, you make your measurement models, uh, uh, report those that I have already covered earlier, it should be sufficient enough. But again, I caution to a PhD student or master by research or lecturers who intend to publish your papers in good journal, some reviewer, okay, to this review because of we, we do have the smart PLS3 and they happens to have the model fit, they want you to report. So some reviewer requests you to report the model fit. Some examiners, especially uh, in PhD level, want you to report as well the model fit of your uh, of your data even if you're using smart pls okay do you do you, here it came out to be like this because of i throw some items i didn't include them so it will appear like this next week when i incorporate everything in it will turn out to be different okay but now for now i i purposely make it like this but i already explained to you all for mba or mhcm we accept your work without more of it i can relatively i say quote unquote relatively say but if your supervisor says that you need to report the model fit and it happens to be in model fit uh, range and why not report that things okay but somehow if you happen not to get the model fit parameters that's fine as long as you report the your auto loadings your construct reliability and validity and discriminant validities okay as long as you report all those the the the, the parameters of measurement model we accept that yeah, mhem or M mba but for PhD, again, I'm not saying that you should, you should not, okay? But yeah, you, you, you work it up with your supervisor and see how he or she uh, says about it, okay? There's uh, gonna, there's a low one, I'm gonna remove this. See if I can remove this. Yeah, no. Something still not really right here. The R square is above. So that's the reason why I'm looking at it. This one also 0 0.2, this is not good. So I'm just gonna clean here. See if I, before I do some regressions, okay, just to,
Let me clean first this data. Something is not really good habitants. Yeah, so this is another problem. So, okay, uh, um, it doesn't look nice actually. Testing. Okay, so I have to run one more time. So they all look all looks fine. When it comes to the Chrome Alpha Composite LVE, looks fine, but the square uh, R square is adjusted R square. Okay, <clears throat> it's higher, and this is because these are. Uh, Still okay. I'm uh, gonna, gonna throw this thing. This should I keep this? It's okay. Let me run. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna disconnect this square, and then we go to path. Then I let me check first. See whether it's all good. They all good. They are all point eight, point eight, 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 okay. And then I'm gonna throw this thing out. Four. Right, okay. Let's run one more time. We have path. We have done our measurement models. Now we have changed to the path models. Okay, point step, point one. Not worry, I want this only this. So now is the path model here. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, this is the better, we have a negative better values. Okay, there's some issue here as well because it's what, but well, 
let's not to worry about this thing, maybe because of the data that I manipulate, I overlook a little bit, but it's okay. Uh, <clears throat> so now we run, once we done with the measurement models, okay, this is the convergent everything, okay, make sure that we have done this, okay. Then we go test the structural models. The structural models, we only have H1 here, only one. Remember here? This is the only one. Okay, the structural model, we only have one. So, we test this. We see that it's the better value of negative 0.5.1. I know it's a neg. I know from the number, the better value, the path coefficient value, I know this is significant. So what we're gonna do here is consistent, consistent bootstrapping, okay, bootstrapping. Okay, uh, so earlier I was talking to you about uh, the number of subsamplings, the replication, this is the one. The, um, it shows here is 500, but I fully recommend that you guys to change this to 1,000. Okay, change to 1,000. The rest all, you don't have to change, okay? Then we are uh, consistent, yes, we don't have to select this, no more partially square. It's all path, make sure that it's all under path, huh? no more factors. Okay, here, no, nothing, all right, so, there you go. Then we start to calculate. Then it will take some time, but because of my computers are very uh, fast one, then we generate. So there you go, the path. So the p-value is significant. We know that it's a significant. I already know says that it's a significant. So uh, there you go. You can turn here and you can see here. These are all not, they put it not value or no, because we only interest in concept developments too. Uh, uh, they put here concept is only here is significant. Okay, so something is not. Um, Doesn't that generate some? Yeah, probably. Only appear here significant. The rest are here not available. Okay, so there is something here, also something not right here. Okay, um, it's okay. Something is not appear to be correct. Okay, so. Let's do it one more time. Maybe more normal algorithms, path, path. Yes, calculate. Yes. Okay, so so there <clears throat> in a normal uh, um, okay, there's a normal one. So let's bootstrap. Okay, let's bootstrap one thousand samples. Okay, significant is point five. Okay, should be okay. There you go, it show here, okay? So, they are significant here. Uh, let's look, okay, there you go. 
So this is the one, like I says, innovations to concept development. We're only interested on this, okay? We're only interested on this hypothesis here. We're not really interested because these are reflective of this. So we now say this 2.39, it's a significant. So the report, there you go. The T statistic is 2.394. Okay, that's the standard 0.14. So it's significant. Okay. So the model only can be run if it's consistent. It doesn't come out to be what I expect to be. But if I run, the normal PLS algorithm, it came out just fine, okay? So there you go. That's it. We have done the normal one. Any questions? Do you have any questions so far? So I've done this hypothesis one. Okay, so after that, the brush okay, and then we go to the last one, the effect size, the F square. Okay, but um, since we okay, let's look sides. Okay, board effects, total effects, histogram. Well, we don't have that. Yeah, but the effects, well, we'll, since we only have, okay, we have two items, we're just not able to create the effect size because <clears throat> not really, I think we can actually. So let's, by items, can we done it by items? By total effects, p values. No, no, that's it. We don't have that. Okay. Okay, the F square. So here's the F square. So they come. It's not really, uh, basically, what well, we can, uh, um, using the F square, uh, if you look at the, uh, we only can see from, uh, from, from here, this to which are the other gen generation or testing and design. So we idea generations to concept, is 0.25 idea okay so it appeared that uh, testing and design has higher effect size compared to idea generation the rest um, not really well because we only we only have one direct usually when we 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 goes to f square if we go stone by next week, it should be okay. Absolutely, we'll be able to see which are the one that have a higher effect size uh, that contributes to the main construct. But at this point, we only have only these two. So that's how we go. We, we know that these are higher by looking at the uh, the 
beta value so we, we know 0 0.93 0 0.70 this is higher than than idea, idea generations yeah that's that's about it man for today's sessions any questions All right, let's see. Okay. So one of my dependent variable is dummy variable. So how do we deal with dummy variable using smart PLS? Okay. Um, you still can. It's a, just a normal one. You just can, uh, if you're using a, 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 a PLS, instead of the normal one you use a dummy one you still can using your indicators okay uh, well, i don't really know well, there's a chinese character yes uh, from international student i believe are you here Yeah, okay. So yeah, you can uh, by using a dummy, no, not a problem. You can create, you, you still can using it uh, from your smart PM, uh, SPSS. It's still possible, not a problem at all. Any more questions? Any questions, come on. Uh, in the process of analyzing your, 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 your data, or if you have not collected data yet, you can always ask. Especially, this is the time that it is good to ask questions if uh, you're actually planning to create your own questionnaire, probably, or you plan to uh, do EFA. Probably some of you are wondering, okay, maybe you, you were maybe not really sure because before Smart PLS 3 appear, or even if they, they, they do the Smart PLS 3 in the early versions, okay, when they don't have the factor analysis uh, uh, criteria, uh, more so in the Smart PLS 2, okay, uh, most researcher, if not all, especially that are doing PhD or bio research, where they have to conduct factor analysis or exploratory factor analysis, we use SPSS to to to, uh, to configure our uh, components. Okay, but now uh, we smart PLS three earlier. Remember, I showed it to you. It is not easy to create. A good model fit you see not easy i thought that uh, i created this uh, 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 data i uh, i didn't really check towards the end so instead of using a, a smart pls uh, uh, algorithm consistency i used the normal one then only uh, the output of the structural model came out if i were to use the consistency and the consistency it didn't come out okay there's something because i already suspect something on my dimension here that they are reaching more than one uh, of the r square value so something is not correct there uh, which i did not i overlooked i thought that by omitting some of my my, my data it will it will be it would still can be done i purposely do it like that because i want to the students to see you also to see that generally you may encounter this kind of problems you see so the question is should i do fact analysis in spss then only you do in smart pls3 or should i straight away do in smart pls3 um i i've no query on that if you do it both but uh, most of the time when you are doing a PhD 
there is no simple cut shots. There's no. You you have to uh, do a lot of trial and errors of your data, which data will produce a good uh, 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 result. You see. Uh, so you have to run several times. If you were to do it both in SPSS and PLS3, run, you see. Uh, after all, you are producing uh, a good uh, 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 data. Yeah, there's another uh, question that, uh, uh, dummy, okay, because of the common method variance, bagaimana, yeah, doctors, okay. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, the, the, the problems, okay, when you, you're using dummies, you're not actually correcting from your respondents. So dummy is dummy, whatever it is there, and then you create that some. Yeah, um, this is something that you need to, uh, to, to work it out. There are some parameters uh, 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 that you, you can, but yeah, you, that's the reason why you, you, you already acknowledge there's a dummy. Okay, and then there is a issues of common method variants. Um, I haven't come across to that because I haven't done common my dummies or, or my primary data. So, so this dummy you created from 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 where? Can you can you share with me a little bit so that I can give you some remedies? This data you get it from where? Um, uh, data are from panel data or why you're creating dummies? Fajora, Madli. Yeah, there you go, the panel data. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, these are other things again okay, uh, social items, social items, dummy panel data. Um, I'm not saying that panel data cannot be done and run in SPSS or MS or, or in SAM. But most of the time, People use panel data uh, using uh, econometric uh, uh, software like eBuse and so on. So it will be much, much better uh, tools to run your panel data instead of. Especially if you are doing PhD, then they will start to question your methodology, why you are using this when you are testing from existing secondary data. Because you need to do some adjustment and then you manipulate. So yeah, there is no correct absolute answer to that. Okay. Uh, the best things, okay, my advice is to uh, sit down and discuss with your supervisor. Okay, should you adapt uh, or Okay, so yeah, I use eViews, but for the mediation effect, I try to use Smart PLS. Well, not. I mean, there are quite a few uh, methods that you can do mediations. You see, uh, you can always use SPSS using the Pritchard and Hayes methods instead of using uh, Smart PLS because mediation and Smart PLS. Okay, I'm not saying. So there's no right and wrong actually you can still i mean if it works it works okay if it doesn't work and then use the, the 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 other methods yeah so yeah why not um, try uh, uh, pritch and haze uh, 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 mediation analysis is quite widely used among researchers so it can be done it's possible but you can test both and then try to work it out with your supervisor, which one is the best. I'm not sure about EVS whether they can do the mediations using an equation or not. I'm not that sure, but yeah, you can actually uh, sit down with your supervisor and uh, if possible, it's possible. 
Okay. Um, now this composite to do normally test using uh, PLS. Um, no, uh, there's a, okay. There's a, okay. There's quite a few questions some more. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the how to determine relationship is significant. How about the T value and P value? Um, if, okay, um, T value is usually, is, um, T value, because it's from the, um, usually you will base on the two tails. Okay, uh, as long as you have 1.596 both side, okay, and then not less than 1.96 again and above, then you are more likely going to get either a significant p values, okay. Um, yeah i mean i'm not really sure what is your question how to determine relationship between if you can about t value and what so as t value if you get 1.96 and above you're more likely going to get uh uh significant fee values all right that is the chinese guy i can't, I can't read chinese character so I, can't, I don't really know what your name is so another one is, is it compulsive to do a normally, uh, normality test you, when using PLS? No, you don't have to, okay? Because PLS is a non-parametics statistic tools. If you are using MS, yes. Uh, Rosidia, are you PhD student? Are you a PhD student? Is Rosidia still here or already left? Rosidia, yeah, Rosidiana. Is it Rosidiana? Rosidiana? Yeah. Uh, MBA, okay. Um, you don't have to. I'm not saying that you absolutely you can't, okay? But you, it is not easy to get normally distributed uh, data. Not easy, okay? But um, but if you're using PLS, no, you don't have to, okay? But if you want to do, why not? You will make your data much much more accurate, okay? Which one, which is better, Dr. SPSS or PLS? Now there's no right or wrong to that answers. I don't have the answer to that. But it is come back to my last week uh, uh, lectures or my last week uh, workshop. Uh, no fun, uh, okay, my Pascal plums using uh, your MBA or MHCM, MBA, I assume they are MBA because you have MBA or MHCM. So basically, uh, uh, you go back to your research objective. What actually you, you, your research is all about, what do you actually intend to investigate? If you if you if you just investigate a normal uh, 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 linear relationship, most of the time SPSS is good enough. You don't have to use PLS. PLS, like I I share with you, uh, uh, reason why people choose PLS rather than SPSS or the covariant methods, uh, covariant some methods like MS or Listrel. There are reasons to that, why you choose PLS. You can't just simply, hey, let's do PLS because it's easy. It's, no, if you're using PLS3, is no longer as what people claim easy PLS2, no. Because like I showed to you earlier, uh, the measurement models, you have to use the consistency PLS uh, uh, algorithms. And sometimes you will not be fit. The measurement model, the threshold value is very difficult to reach. You see? So you need to play around and ensure that you get the minimum threshold values. 
Uh, well, SPSS, SPSS is, is a parametric uh, statistical tool. It requires you to run normality tests. Okay, you need to ensure that your, your data is clean. There is no, uh, you know, uh, your outlayers, you try to minimize as much outlayers as possible if you are using SPSS. Even PLS also are started to, they are going to that direction as well to, to ensure that the data that you are presenting, they are good data. And in order to have a good data, they require you to follow certain parameters. Then only you can run your structural models. So yeah, so there's no answer to that. I, um, I'm sorry, I can't uh, say SPSS is better than PLS or PLS better than SPSS. Uh, for me, it all depends on your research objective, your research questions. There are some research question and objective good enough just to use SPSS rather than PLS, or there are some research objective which require some complex analysis where SPSS cannot be done and you have to use PLS to get it done, yeah? So that's the answer. So there's no right and wrong. Some more? Okay, if you don't have, then I'll I end my workshop then. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, bye.